So folks, it is a beautiful weekend morning where I am. I hope it is where you are as well. Beautiful. In a few weeks, we'll be celebrating the holidays. And you would think again, it's supposed to be maybe a bit of a quiet morning. Nothing really going to hit old Donnie in a bad way. Well, you'd be mistaken because he just took two massive blows in quick succession related yes to multiple cases but primarily the one down in fulton county because it's there where he just realized none of his tactics are going to work remember that's the case that is sort of the last one to get started right the one in new york the criminal one started early then there's the civil case there's the two jack smith cases they're sort of winding their way through but this one in atlanta is just kicking off and it's the one that maybe is the most danger to trump in terms of the amount of years he could spend in prison and what he just found out is that his bs isn't going to work like this is like low down state level court it's rough and tumble they treat crooks like crooks remember these are the people that mugshotted him none of the other jurisdictions mugshotted him right not federal not new york this was unique and here he's realizing he's not going to get special treatment and one of the issues that's come up yet again and we're going to talk about this is that donald trump is still begging and pleading for a plea deal He's still begging the judge and the prosecutor for mercy. He's not going to say it in public. He'll never say it in public. In fact, he'll say just the opposite in public. No deals. I never take deals. I never remember. He says, I never settle in court. I never settle in court. Uh, And so as a result, he's going to make these arguments. Right. But in reality, the case is going bad for Trump. There's a lot of things up in the air still, but it's going bad. And there are new information about the plea deal that he wants that maybe he could have gotten six months ago, a year ago, but he's never going to get now. And this is blowing up in his face at world record pace. I want you to watch this. These two clips I'm going to show you really demonstrate how it's going poorly for Trump, how yes, there are a lot of questions up in the air and nothing is fully guaranteed yet. But he has taken a loss today and the man who says he never takes deals wants a plea deal and he's never, ever going to get it in this jurisdiction. Watch this. We'll break it down. Let's talk about this for a second. Um, uh, Amy Lee, the 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 concept of the trial in Fulton County, uh, Fonnie Willis has said she'll be ready to go around August ish. But because of issues having to do with the appeals on the on the federal trials, The judge did ask, how much time would you need if this trial could go earlier? And the the lawyer said about 30 days, which means this trial could be the first one. It could be, Allie. It could be any time between now and 2029, apparently. (laughs) That's right. Um, But the state, (laughs) yeah. But uh, when asked, the state said it would need about a 30-day jump to subpoena its witnesses. They'd had a trial run with that, with the Chesbro and Powell trials that simply didn't go forward. So they're ready to go. But you you also heard the countervailing claim of of Eastman, who said, you know, listen, I just can't wait around until 2029 to do it. And that led Judge McAfee down other roads, like would this be tried as two buckets of defendants? Would this be tried as eight defendants each and possibly Trump by himself? So we came out with a lot more questions than we had answers for about the timing of the trial after today's six and a half hour hearing. Uh, Let's talk about this First Amendment business, uh, Joyce. Uh, In fact, not in this indictment, but in the in the Jack Smith indictment, I think it's the second or third page. It's very, very clear. Everybody needs to just dispense with this First Amendment thing. Everybody's got a right to lie. Donald Trump has a right to lie. He's got a right to lie about the election. He's got a right to lie about the outcome of the election. He's got he can do this all he wants. He can he can pursue his remedies. But once he's pursued all those remedies, and he still feels like lying about it, he doesn't actually get to take action to overturn the outcome of the election. That's what Jack Smith has said. Um, this is the Fulton County story. Why is, are, the fifth, are the First Amendment claims similar and related? They are. These are the same sorts of claims. And we saw the judge um, in Washington, Judge Chutkin, who we were discussing earlier, dismiss these sorts of First Amendment claims. The same argument applies in Fulton County. When your words are an instrument used to commit a crime, they're not protected by the First Amendment. So if Trump said, you know, to a random person on the street, put your hands up, 
um, I'm going to rob you, certainly those comments wouldn't be protected by the First Amendment. They would be part of committing a crime. Same thing holds true in Fulton County and in D.C., where speech is used to commit crimes, it's not protected. And of course, as the DA's lawyers were quick to point out, the reason that there's not been a prior prosecution has nothing to do with the First Amendment. It has to do with the fact that no president has ever been part of a conspiracy to overturn an election before this. Interesting, though, Amy Lee, the, the, the Trump attorney did sound, seem to be sort of floating this idea of alternative facts, right? The idea that one person's uh, truth is another person's lie. There is some danger about these trials becoming trials around the First Amendment, despite the prosecution's efforts to dispense with the notion that these are First Amendment prosecutions because they're not. Um, Donald Trump, in his social media, in his speeches, wants to call them both First Amendment uh, issues and election interference in both cases. And I suspect that's not going away just because a judge says so. Of course it isn't. And to piggyback on Joyce's answer, I think it's interesting. I actually looked up to see what the ACLU's position was. And a few weeks ago, it published an op-ed saying that it, a staunch defender of First Amendment rights, who actually defended Trump various times, including being upset that he got kicked off social media for uh -huh. exercising those rights. Even the ACLU has come out and said, you know, this isn't a First Amendment case. But go back to your question. You know, the real the real issue at today's hearing was exactly when could the judge determine these First Amendment issues? Did he have to wait until during trial when the evidence started coming out? Or was there any avenue that he could determine them prior to trial? And for the first time today, the defendants floated that there was a case that they found from Georgia that said that the judge could actually determine these issues before trial. And so there was a lot of hullabaloo about uh, what what would the defendants have to stipulate to to have the judge determine this. U ultimately, though, this isn't going to be a successful claim. I mean, this is not a First Amendment case. The rubber meets the First Amendment road when talk turns into action. And there was plenty of action here. Well, liability at all it doesn't mean you can't be sued. And then, Hugo, you know, lest people think that all of these cases, which really we need like Homeland style boards to keep track of, Less people think that they're existing in silos. They're not. And the reason why is there's a lot of repetitive arguments that are being raised by Donald Trump. For example, in Fulton County, hours long hearing yesterday, Steve Sadow, the lawyer for Trump, first time in court, gets up making similar arguments that we've seen. Presidential immunity, First Amendment free speech protection against that Georgia indictment. If you're Trump's lawyers, aren't you now saying mm, this may not work so well for us even here in Georgia? Well, the one thing they are relying on is the confluence of all of these cases coming together at the same time. And, you know, we talk about, you know... You and I talk about this all right. the time. But I think it's particularly significant, um, and it came up yesterday, because we were talking about the trial schedules, and Steve said out, Trump's lawyer was saying, well, you know, we have this trial in March, and then we have this trial in Florida, and, you know, the, we cannot... The world's smallest violin right. playing for Donald Trump, in my opinion, but go ahead. And, you know, we don't have an indication of how Judge McAfee in, in the Fulton County case will decide in terms of setting a trial date. But, you know, there were questions yesterday as to you know, how it's going to fit in with the rest of his criminal trials. And since this one was indicted last, in theory, I presume we would think it would come after the two federal trials. Uh, and we don't potentially know if those will go to trial as they are currently scheduled. So I think there is room to move uh, on, on the delay. I mean, you and I have been following Fulton County just so closely. What was your read on the fact that McAfee yesterday would not declare, I'm going to take that state's offer of an August 2024 trial day? It's very interesting. I think there's a lot of moving parts. Um, you know, we have previously reported that the uh, Fulton County DA's office has kind of privately told the judge that there may be more plea deals forthcoming. Except for your exclusive reporting, who's not going to get a plea offer, though? Right. We reported earlier this week that, you know, Trump, Meadows and Giuliani uh, are not eligible or seen as eligible currently for, for plea deals. Uh, with Meadows, that would be a particularly big blow as well, because he was someone who was fishing for a deal. But Hugo, when you say not eligible, you're not talking some statutory legal reason why they're not eligible. This is more strategic from your reporting and what I read from the DA's office on why they're not going to offer them deals. Right. It's, it's kind of an internal designation that, that they had made to say, you know, who are the people we don't want to give deals to? Who are the people we want to go to trial against? And they've kind of drawn this line at this point 
at Trump, Meadows and Giuliani and everyone else, you know, they're still open to uh, having discussions about uh, plea deals with. But those three, as far as we understand, are, are off the table. And that. do you think that quickly, do you think that signals then that the strength of their cases if you're Fannie Willis, means that they don't need somebody like Mark Meadows or they don't need someone like Rudy Giuliani to cooperate, which we've on all these guilty pleas so far have included cooperation. Do you think that means that Fannie Willis's case is so strong? She's like, I don't need them to be able to prove my case against Donald Trump. You know, I think I think it is notable the uh, the evidence that was in the indictment um, against Trump that Fannie Willis had, which was not in the D.C. indictment. You know, she had a lot of evidence that was separate to what the January 6th committee found, what the, what the federal investigation found. And it also applies for Mark Meadows. She had a lot of uh, points in the indictment about how Meadows was coordinating with state officials, what he was doing, uh, both in his capacity maybe as a, as a White House official, but also what he was doing um, uh, on, behalf of the, on behalf of Trump as a, as a, as a campaign, as a presidential campaign. Mm-hmm. And so I think there were notable instances um, of, of evidence that Fannie Willis had that the federal indictment did not have. And I think that potentially speaks to the strength of our case. So I guess that means that, Hugo, you and I, over Christmas, we're going to sit down and we're going to look at all the moving pieces and we're going to game out who's going to go when and how, and that's how we're going to spend our Christmas break. But Larry Mellon Curly, they're not going to get plea deals from Fannie Willis. <laughs>